We've just come up with a relative time scale of events that happened in the rocks um, down at State Circle. Now if I were to go to another area of Canberra and for example if I were to see some limestone with some volcanic rocks on top of them and then if I were to look under the limestone and I could see the same sandstone unit that we saw down there I could join those two stories together. That, that would be a story involving rocks deposited in a deep marine environment then uplifted after land, eroded away um, with the sea coming back in, depositing sandstone, then limestone, and then all of a sudden we had volcanoes coming through, depositing um, ash in this area. I could do that actually across the entire Earth. I could look at rocks from times spanning from the beginning of the Earth all the way up to the present day, and I could make a massive relative time scale of events. And actually, the geological time scale that you've probably seen was made in exactly that way. People from all around the world looked at rocks from all around the world of so many different ages and they came up with this sequence of events. Um, and actually these rock, um, the names here come from like names of actual rocks that people studied. So for example the Cretaceous is named after um, some calcium carbonate rich um, rocks found in the upper Cretaceous um, that some people s studied. <laughs> the Jurassic period is named after the Jura Alps. So actually all of this was actually done before um, we could date anything, absolute dating methods. So we kind of had this um, relative time scale and then in the early 1900s um, finally when we were ab when we were able to radiometrically date things, we were able to add absolute dates to this timescale that we had created.